Yes, there's polarization. Yes, there's all of that. But when we start talking about policy and topics, people generally agree on most things. You throw abortion in there, you, you throw gasoline on a whole lot of lit lots. But if you start talking economics, you find out that most people kind of believe the same things, especially when kind of coaxed into the context. And that's what I want to do this morning, coax into the context. Our economic system is not divine. In other words, it wasn't God or some, if you believe in God, God didn't put it here. If you believe in some supreme being, that supreme being didn't put it there. A whole bunch of people, some you know, leaders in some countries decided how it's going to operate. We get a you know, monetary exchange system and all these things that were in, in our several last hundred years created by, you know, Western countries, but it has always been there. There's always been Mesopotamia. There's always been the Ottoman Empire and all these different folks had their own systems that, you know, worked, didn't work, etc. But we've had a longstanding system with the Industrial Revolution. And look, I'm not a historian or an expert in all of that, but all of us have the ability to see how things or work in if we choose to do so. So we have a particular type of economic system that, that we run by. And this economic system right now is not working for most. And we have a tendency to put these kinds of blames on a politician or something like that. In this case, Biden is in power and we throw it on to Biden, the reason why we're having such economic situation. And the truth of the matter, it is Never the case. The case is always those who control capital, uh, who have power, are the ones who have constantly done and created policies that keep them in power. Everybody does that. People say, well, that's human nature. Yeah, that's human nature. But human nature as well is that most people are not greedy. I don't know, for anybody who watched the movie Wall Street back in the, I think it was back in the 90s, early 90s or late 80s. Remember Gecko? Gecko came out and says, greed is good. And they gave you the impression that everybody is greedy and that because everybody is greedy, that's the reason why you needed a capitalist system because it doesn't. the capitalist system doesn't have heart. But what it does have is the ability for greed to reign, right? It's always about maximizing the dollar, making as much money as you can. And if you don't do it, somebody else will, etc. And that that greed is what drives us. And it's easy to disprove that, right? It's easy to prove, first of all, that that's a lie, though we all say it and believe it. Greed is good. Greed is what makes things go around, etc. If that were the case, think about this. We wouldn't. The vast majority of the people in the world, and let's just use America as a whole, the vast majority of Americans won't allow 1% of Americans to screw them because in their greed, they would not allow others to be more greedy than they are, that they are or that they could or that they would. Most people just want to go to work. They get up in the morning. They want to go to work, be able to pay their bills and live a life. Most people want to have uh, either a family life or a party life or whatever. They just want to make enough to survive. Greedy, they're not. Greedy are the psychopaths, however. Greedy are the psychopaths who are if, who eventually also control the system via their greed and given that all of us just want a job or when I say a job, whether it's one that we create ourselves or whether it's one working for somebody else. So in order for us to be able to change things, if we want to change things, we have to first stop believing the nuttiness, the silliness, that which is imposed on us as fact or somehow truly believe. No, most people are not greedy. Most people are not cutthroat. Most people, in fact, 
are good. Many of the folks, however, that walk on top of others to make it, no matter what, those are psychopaths. So what you find, and I hate to put it this way, but that person who is running away from taxes, that person who has a billion dollars and is going to go back and support politicians who tell them, I'm not going to allow you, only, I'm not only going to allow you to keep hold on to those billions that you really didn't earn, but I'm also going to ensure that you don't have to put back some of those billions in the form of taxes. And those billionaires who support you then so it shows the psychopathy. It shows the psychopathy of what I'm talking about. Because I want to use myself, yours truly. If I were ever to get a billion, well, I couldn't get a billion dollars because the truth of the matter is, as I started accumulating wealth, I would be throwing it out the door probably as fast as I'm getting it. Again, I am like most people, human, human. I'm like most people just want to survive, want to survive comfortably, but don't worship the mighty dollar proper, the wealth proper. I want to give back. The, the thing about it is also, I could not possibly, with my knowledge, with my work, with the things that I do, there is not a possibility for me to be a billionaire without having walked on, walked over, harm someone else, whether directly or indirectly. Because my worth does not afford me the possibility to make that kind of money. An economic system, let me give an example now. If I had bought Tesla, uh, Elon Musk's com company, <laughs> that really didn't make him a billionaire, that he had to walk over others to make it. If I had bought that stock, I could have sat in my home and turned, let's say, $100,000 into, let's say, several million. Let's just, for argument's sake, say a billion dollars. And one would say, well, look, you became rich and you didn't harm anybody to do it. You made a wise investment. To which I would say, yes, I made a wise investment. But to say that in my wise investment, I hadn't harmed anybody forgets that. Let's go ahead and use the having bought Tesla as an example. I haven't harmed anybody directly, but there's something called abstraction, which is what capitalism is perfectly what it perfectly does. Abstraction means this. I have designed a system where I can profit, get very wealthy without directly harming every, anyone, but the institution itself that have afforded me the ability to be rich harmed a whole many. Let's go to the electric car or to Tesla or whatever. To, for me to have been able to build or for, for Tesla to have been able to build that car. There are a lot of natural resources that were acquired throughout the world where one, people died to acquire it, children doing slave labor, labor for, for rare materials, and many other systemic things of that nature. Uh, people working in some parts of the country per producing certain types of things that harm themselves, that cause them ill, etc. So I got rich because the Tesla executives were able to get the working of executives in Pakistan, executives in Afghanistan, executives in Peru, executives in Ecuador, and all these places where all these different types of material come from. And, and by the way, I'm random using, using countries where they export some sort of material where uh, people harm themselves and get in the materials for which we build things, for which the stockholder of these companies have enriched themselves and abstractly not harmed anybody, but and not harmed anybody, but abstractly do so. And then at the same time, having raised the billion from that big stock investment or whatever, where I've harmed nobody directly, when it is time to say, now I should want to pay 
a tax, I try to find every mechanism possible not to pay the tax, but to hold on to that wealth created by the design of an economic system that, yes, harm others, but abstractly hides the way in which it does so. Again, it's a matter of narrative and how the story is told. And we are told a story about how an economic system runs and why interest rates are high or low or where inflation comes from or not. And we sit down and we watch MSNBC, NBC, CBS, CNBC, and all these stations singing the same narrative. And we sit down and just play our part in the game and believe all that we hear. And anybody that disagrees, uh, we have another, another group of folks who make it seem from the writings that they do that you are the one that something is wrong with you. You are the darn communist. You are the damn socialist. You are all these things that they make into a negative to ensure that this system that is designed for the psychopaths to succeed are fine. Now, I'm not talking about that baker who's a millionaire because they created a nice tasting bread that a lot of people like. And that they ultimately buy in and become rich. And when it, rich is relative, that millionaire, that's not who I'm talking about. Oh, I, I, that guy, that person is fine. If you work hard as hell, you deserve to make more than somebody who isn't working as hard. But after you have reached a certain amount of wealth, capital, etc., you are not doing it on your own. That wealthy baker eventually. Yes, it's his flavor or her flavor and her magical way of using yeast and all of that. But eventually, as she grows, she's bringing in more people that are actually a part of making that. That if, if the economic model doesn't force a shearing because, uh, well, I did that, I invented that, something is wrong. So when Sanders and Omar is leading, that is uh, Bernie Sanders and Ilan Omar, as this article points out, are leading, they're leading the, the, the drive to have a global tax because what else the wealthy does is they take their monies and they hide it into places like the Caribbean where it affords them a zero tax rate just to hold their money at some fixed cost or whatever. We have to create an international mechanism so that those who have made their money on the backs of others, and that is every super wealthy person on this planet, doesn't get a chance to play country number one against country number two. It is so very important. All right. We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join.